they really want to buy our type of properties in their neighborhood, which is good. I'd love for people to look at that, to, to consider what might be in their neighborhood, because ideally, I would love, Silverstream Advisors would love to buy the properties that we purchase and sell in our own backyard here in Salt Lake City. Salt Lake's a very strong economy, one of the strongest in the nation, uh, have one of the lower unemployment rates, and uh, but unfortunately, it's impossible. I cannot get even close to what's available. Um, and I'm going to show you this evening uh, a deal that we're going to unveil, a brand new home that we put under uh, uh, a good amount of work into. It's a gorgeous house in Atlanta, Georgia. And that home in Salt Lake City, even with the recession, would probably be triple the, the price even today than the home we're selling uh, at the price. And Atlanta's not a bad economy at all. They, uh, to give you some history on Atlanta, they were one of the early boom towns, primarily because Atlanta real estate was very, very affordable for many, many years. And, uh, and there's tons and tons of government land uh, that uh, they released to developers, and developers started building homes. Banks, it was one of the bigger uh, cities for bankers to land in and lots and lots of the banks in that Georgia market. So it was one of the early uh, boom cities, uh, not just because of development, but because of job growth, demand, everything else. And obviously they were the, one of the first ones to crash because of that. Builders had way too much inventory they were building on and construction loans. And, and of course, so it crashed. Now, it is a stronger economy uh, potentially and currently than most other cities that you might be aware of, in, including many of the cities that you might live in. So what we're going to uh, teach you a little bit about, maybe have a, just a quick discussion, is the reasons you should avoid buying real estate in your backyard or your neighborhood. Now, we're not saying that it's toxic or your, your, where you live is a bad area. It's just as an investment, there are certain risks versus rewards that you need to consider. And we also want to show you how to regain control of your retirement or savings through Silverstream Advisors' real estate money machine. And again, I'll also show you the deal of the week at the end of the presentation. If you have questions, please ask those. There's a box here on the right of your screen, the uh, go to meeting box. You can go ahead and type in a question if you have one. Even if you want my opinion on a specific market, I'll tell you if I'm aware of it or what I'm aware of it. Or if you are curious if we're going to be getting into a market, I'd love to, to hear what you have to say. But please don't limit yourself. Again, when I look at my early career when I was very, very successful in the real estate investing and financing, I thought I was the king of the hill in southern Utah, the Las Vegas market as well. two people to get something financed uh, anywhere from a single family home to a high rise condo downtown Las Vegas. Uh, and I've financed hundreds of millions of dollars just in a short period of time. And I really didn't look outside of our local market there. I didn't really need to. I thought there was, I had, was making such good investment decisions, making lots of money in a very small geographic area. And I didn't really see the need to. Um, it was only until really the crash of, of the banking and finance business in, oh, let's say, oh, nine, uh, where I really had a wake-up call and said, wow, there's nothing at all going on in my backyard or anywhere near it. What am I going to do? And I finally started recognizing that there is a lot more outside of my fence. And, uh, and I had a huge wake-up call to say, you know what, Greg, um, you're not an island, nor is your community an island. There are great opportunities all over, and that's when I started researching it and recognizing what was available and created the company based on that theory that I myself was like you and many other clients that I don't want to go outside. Um, I'll give you another close uh, example. My best friend growing up, he will absolutely not invest in any real estate or anything for that matter outside of where he lives, and, and he lives in Las Vegas. We grew up there. Uh, he's, he just purchased a home for $85,000. It gets $1,100 a month in rent. He'll probably put $5,000 fixing it up. 
Um, you know, and he's okay with that as long as he can go over there and manage it. But he has nothing to do. He has no job, no career. He's got a couple properties, and he's he'd be tickled to get a net eight percent on his money uh, if the values go up. Uh, and there's nothing wrong with that. He is uh, again something that it is his full time job where he has nothing else to do. Uh, so I would say that I'm not going to tell people that they're uh, silly for, for making de decisions like that. We just want to open your eyes, make uh, uh, expand your horizons as well. So we also want you to know it's such an amazing opportunity. When you see the property I've got and many of the properties we come up with, we cherry pick them. It is amazing what we run across and, and even amazing what we can't pick up. We, we're not massive company. We don't buy hundreds of homes a month. Um, but we do have access to, to great inventory. Uh, one of the companies that we were purchasing from in Atlanta, Georgia, uh, they recognized the change of the economy and what they were doing. So they literally are not going to sell any real estate at all over the next few years. And they are committed to buying 2,600 homes over the next 12 months or so and not selling a single house. Now, why would a company uh, get funding or invest $100 million roughly and not buy or sell one single house? It's pretty obvious. They've done the research. They know that now is the time to buy and now is the time to hold. It is not the time to flip these properties for their own benefit. And we want you to know that there is a, a stirrings now. There, the word is out on the street. It is no longer a secret like it was a year ago. We thought that it, we were banging people's head uh, against the wall just to convince them that you should buy real estate and the bottom has arrived. And now we're a year and a half later from telling those stories. The bottom passed us easily that period of time. And prices have gone up 10 20% from the wholesale number, not the retail. And, and that's what we're trying to do is sell these properties below retail for you. So whether you're just starting out or pro, we want you to know that there are great deals all across the nation and there will be continually uh, uh, some great deals here and there. I just had a meeting with some uh, uh, clients that want to refer a lot of business to us and they asked me that, how long do you see this continuing? I, I believe nationwide we're going to see good opportunities for the next two years. Now that doesn't mean every market. I know that in Memphis we are seeing the last little bit of the bottom. Uh, they had their bottom about a year and a half ago and we are seeing inventory reduced by at least 31 percent from the previous year. Now that tells and the prices are just going to go up. That tells me in a year from now you will not be able to get anywhere near the opportunity that we're seeing in Memphis. So talked to several property managers in Memphis and they have seen uh, in the last six months they've seen more out of state and out of town applicants for rent applying to rent a home than they have in the previous eight years combined. Think about that. Why is that the case? They have jobs. They, it's affordable to live there. That is the time to get into those markets and we're trying to tell people, listen to what we have to say. We're constantly monitoring this data and it's not just new uh, information you just get on the website, it's by talking to people and putting the dots together knowing this is it. I know that we have maybe 12 months left of what we see at the most in Memphis and possibly even Atlanta, Georgia. I believe that as well. We're going to see a huge uptick in prices probably in the next 18 months in Atlanta, Georgia, and other markets, Indianapolis, et cetera. But there will be a great opportunity in parts of Michigan, parts of Ohio, um, that they have a little bit of time to go. So anyhow, I just want you to real, realize that if you are just looking for amazing deals in your area, you are very limiting in what you're going to find. Um, and I know that sometimes peace of mind is way more important than uh, just numbers, but we're trying to educate you a little bit here. One of the factors that makes investments important in real estate is the rent to price ratio, meaning let's just say a home rents out for $1,000 a month. What is the ratio in relation to that income versus the price of the home? 
that is one of the main factors we look at to help determine a good price of a home in markets we're familiar with. Um, so uh, if you're able to pick up a home for, let's say, $60,000 that gets $1,000 a month in rent, that's a phenomenal ratio that is most likely going to double your value in just the principal. And, and that's a concept that a lot of people have a hard time believing. They are so used to buying homes that they want to live in with the shutters and the white picket fence that they don't realize that real estate can be invest, purchased on the income alone. If you look at the uh, the big firms out there when they're buying commercial buildings, apartment buildings, uh, uh, shopping malls, the number one thing they're going to look at is what is that income going to generate and what am I going to pay to get that income? So we want you to analyze that and if I were to call you up and say how much would you give me to generate a thousand dollars a month to you and your family for the next 60 months? What would that Basically, that's twelve thousand dollars a year. So let's say eighty some thousand dollars. How much would you pay me for the eighty thousand dollars of income? In addition to that, if I were to say the home cost me, or this investment, this income-producing thing, costs about eighty thousand dollars to build. So you're going to look at it and say, okay, I will pay you, let's say, fifty thousand dollars for the income because you're going to make a, a, a substantial increase of that and I'll pay you maybe eighty thousand dollars for the property that's fair that's the dummy down what a lot of sophisticated commercial investors are looking for income first second the building sticks and bricks as we would call it so you need to decide what is important is it an investment or is it an emotional thing do you want to buy the home next door because you can monitor those tenants and have a peace of mind that, that you know, you can control them as well as that property. The other thing that's important though is the volatility. I believe that there are some markets that people brag about right now are extremely volatile. And I don't want to have arrows shot at me when I say this. My old hometown, Las Vegas, is one of the most volatile markets that we're going to see. Um, I know that it's booming right now. I know that if I were even wanting to buy a great investment, it's very difficult there, even though I have connections. The concern I have is 60% of all the inventory being sold in Las Vegas right now is being purchased by investors. They are either going to rent those homes or flip those homes. Um, what does that mean? That means there's not enough owner occupants trying to buy there. The unemployment rate is still bad and the economy is very narrow. They are subject to tourism and gambling. That's it. There's not much else that can drive the economy there. Until you see those unemployment numbers drastically change, it's going to be a very volatile market to get into because you're going to have much higher vacancy rates, uh, evictions, uh, you name it. It's going to be really difficult. So I would recommend people staying away from markets that are too volatile, that they don't show signs of appreciation. You're able to buy homes in Las Vegas that are near the cost to rebuild. We are teaching people to buy homes about half the cost to rebuild or 60% of the cost to rebuild because it's very strong chance of appreciating. And we don't sell appreciation like it's a guarantee. We do know that you're getting a safe, sound decision in your portfolio when you know you're buying at a half cost. Regardless of the income, you're buying at half the cost to rebuild. So the cost of doing business is very important. It can be all the difference in the world. And, and we need you to understand that you have to do strategies and planning on every type of investing you and your family decide to do. And so, for example, if you're into a, uh, I have a client that's just in that, that area uh, where the tornadoes hit, and his cost of insurance is ridiculous right now. Uh, parts of Oklahoma and Nebraska, et cetera, it is kind of expensive to have the properties insured, as well as taxes or other things. You need to be aware of that. Uh, one of the other areas that I have a house in, just uh, where my family 
uh, is all located is in Austin, Texas. Very similar to Salt Lake City. The economy is strong. People are moving there. Gorgeous place to live. However, property taxes are nearly 3% uh, right now. I know they don't have state income tax, but to buy a home and hope to make money on it is ridiculous. If you move there and have an amazing job that pays you really, really well, you're going to save money by making a half a million dollars a year living in Texas, and especially Austin. But a, a, a well, let's say an 1,800-square-foot home in Lakeway, Texas, where I have house is $300,000. And the most you're going to generate is $2,000 a month in income, the absolute most, and your taxes, get this, the taxes on that property is going to be about 2.8% of the assessed value. That's just the taxes, not the insurance or you know other risks that are involved. So if your property is assessed at, at $300,000, your taxes alone are going to be 600, 600 and change per month. So you're really netting with insurance and everything. You'll be lucky to net $1,200 per month on a $300,000 investment right now. That's right now in a recession. I don't believe homes are going to go up a whole lot higher in Austin. I just think the inventory is going to get, get gobbled up uh, over time. Um, your market's economy is struggling. I, and I don't know that. I know that's a blanket statement. But we're just trying to say that there is a good likelihood that where you live is not going to be the best place. I know I'm constantly looking at California, which market to get in when. And California's taxes are ridiculous. It's just got a lot of governmental issues. But I am monitoring to get into the right market in California at the right time. Still a little volatile for me right now. Um, I know that uh, there are parts of the country. I know uh, Pam just asked a question about Tulsa. I, I like Tulsa's economy. It's very similar to Oklahoma City. Uh, it is a good market, but there's very little inventory. Uh, we, we have been trying to get some. But that economy really, uh, they ignored the recession. Oklahoma never had a boom in residential uh, per se, um, but they didn't have a bust either. So it is a good market. It's just very, very difficult to, to pick up a good deal on a property. And I would say it's a safe bet. Um, you're not going to really double the, the principal not going to double most likely nor are you going to make double-digit returns in Tulsa, but it's a safe bet if, if you um, want to talk to me about more statistics. I have lots of very detailed statistics about that Tulsa market as well. So are you ready to get out of your comfort zone? Again, going back to what is an investment. You are not investing in mutual funds that are investing in your neighborhood. So unless you live in Austin, Texas, Texas, where Dell's headquarters are located, and you decide to invest in Dell because it's in your neighborhood, regardless of their income or strength of the company, that's not a wise investment decision. You want to know, is the company making money? Are they going to grow? Are they going to expand? All those things are what helps you decide, is it a good investment? Is it a good price to, to earnings ratio, et cetera? That's what investors are doing, doing is not just location. Location might just affect their income because it's expensive to move to California, so companies leave there to go somewhere that's cheaper, cheaper or they have incentives to do that. Uh, you're not investing in Zappos because they moved to Las Vegas where you might live. So real estate shouldn't be a whole lot different if it's an investment. You don't want to move to a bad area that you want to live. I know some people say, Greg, I don't want to move to Memphis. Well, neither do I. Uh, I've considered it just because I've seen these real estate deals. However, it's a great investment. You're able to pick up homes for half the cost to rebuild, and people are paying great rent because they get, have jobs there, and they're making money for a change. So that's what you need to analyze is put on your investor hat and stop getting emotional saying, I don't want to live in Memphis. Well, there are people that do, and there are certain classes of people that want to move there, and, and will make a better living for themselves. And that's what you need to capitalize is the investment decisions. The numbers and market timing is critical. 
the real estate money machine is something that we created. Think about an actual machine that you could purchase on Shop NBC. So I've got my headset on and I'm convincing you on Shop NBC to, to buy my machine. And I'm going to paint a picture for you where I would ask you to buy a machine that could generate, let's say you, you could purchase the, this machine for $100,000 and yet it cost me $180,000 to build the machine. So I'm on QVC or Shop NBC saying, you're able to pick up this machine for $100,000 that cost me 180 to build, and that machine will generate $1,000 a month in income to you. Not only that, but the machine, the materials that I'm spend, I spend 180 grand, let's say, to build, is really going to probably be worth $300,000 in the next five years. But you could pick it up for $100,000 today, and that will generate a thousand dollars a month income in your pocket every single month for as long as you own that. What would you pay for that? Obviously, that machine. And not on top of that, that machine will have a maintenance guarantee to it. So if something is a, a, a concern, we could possibly fix it. If you need advice on how to run the machine, you pick up the phone, and our customer support will help you run that machine. We have experts that do that. Think about that visual for a second. We spend $100,000 on two cars for our family that cost us a fortune. Just get us from point A to point Z. What about a machine instead of a car that you have to constantly fill up with money and, and it depreciates you know, a lot less and it doesn't cost $100,000 for those two cars to build. It might cost forty. Think about that. Spend your money wisely on good investment decisions. And that's what we're trying to teach about the money machine. Here's some of the markets we're currently in. We are expanding. Sometimes we get rid of a market because lack of inventory or, or whatever. But those are the ones we're focusing on right now. Here is the deal of the week. I just got this property literally Friday. And here it is Tuesday. We've got everything put together. We are going to discount this property $2,000 so that you have the ability to get a long-term investment. This goes into this machine. This house was built in 1980, brand new remodel. Look at this kitchen, the carpet, the paint, it's got a fireplace. This home would cost today $100,000 to rebuild, at least that. I would believe, uh, you know, with the fireplace in this lot, you know, it's about $105,000 to rebuild this home. And, and I think this home sold for $125,000 five years ago. So you're picking this up for about half of that. It's a three bed, a four bedroom, three bath in a very nice neighborhood. A Stone Mountain, Georgia is a strong, strong, very good neighborhood. And it, it, it already has a tenant in that that's paying uh, $900. So this is very close to what I was telling you this machine would do. You will not see this. This property I'm to, um, that we picked up, just so you're aware, is from that supplier that will not sell any more homes to anybody. This was the last home we could purchase from them. And it, I literally went through uh, tooth and nail to get the, this one, the last one left. And, uh, you know, we'll still have some homes in Georgia, but at, at this moment, this is it. And as soon as all that inventory is gone, which literally I think is eight homes left, and none of them are good as this, prices are going to probably go up six, seven thousand uh, dollars because they again are not going to sell anymore. If you have interest in this property, we'd love to sell that to you. This is my direct phone number. You can call me anytime. I generally will uh, be available for our clients. We are a customer service company. We are here to build a strong reputation and make sure you're happy with your machine that can generate income to you and your family every single month. Uh, so please give me a call as well as our email and website. If you have any questions, please type those in now. We're basically wrapping up. Uh, I, again, have nothing to hide with people. I can ex you know, brainstorm with you about a market. If you want me to get into a market and argue your point, I'd love to see what, uh, what we can put together. Uh, but if, if we don't have any further questions, again, thanks for your time. I hope you have a fantastic week, and uh, let's, let's do some business together.